When you guys get to the part of your class where you're studying polynomials, you're ready for a pretty good chapter. It's a chapter that for many students is not too difficult as long as they can remember some vocabulary. That's what we're going to talk about here. There's a lot of vocabulary involved with polynomials. First thing is we've got to figure out what a monomial is. A monomial is a number, variable, or product with non-fractional exponents. So it might look like this. Boom. That's a monomial. Or I could write this. Again, it's a monomial. That guy's a product, meaning things are being multiplied together. You could also have negative numbers, something like that. Or you could have fractions in your uh, constant terms, x to the 100th. Doesn't matter. As long as you have products without plus signs or minus signs, and as long as you don't have any negative or fractional exponents, you have a monomial. Let me show you some things that are not monomials. If I have something like 4 to the negative 6, negative exponent, bad, not a monomial. Sometimes negative exponents, as you guys might know, means you write it in the bottom of the fraction. So if I had something like x to the negative third, which is also written as 1 over x to the third, that's not a monomial because we have a negative exponent going on. Bad. Not a monomial. One other thing you might see is something with a square root. Like if I had 2 to the 1 half power, that's a fractional exponent, not a monomial. This is what monomials do look like. One other thing that's not a monomial is anything that has a plus or minus sign, x plus y. Not a monomial. Okay, let's talk about a polynomial. That x plus y business was a polynomial. Here's what it means. A polynomial is the sum or difference of monomials. You don't have to have a, a, a sum or difference. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. The number 3, we already talked about how that's a poly, or that's a monomial. A monomial is a type of polynomial. If I have two things being added together, like 4x plus 2y, that's called a binomial. You guys might already know that mono means 1, bi means 2. Think about what it means 3, do you know? Yeah, trinomial. What do you think a trinomial looks like? Any thoughts? Trinomial. Trinomials, when you have three things being added or subtracted, three things, things meaning monomials, being added or subtracted together. So I could have 4xy take away 5x plus 8, something like that. That's a trinomial because it has three terms. These are all special types of polynomials. I could also have like 18 things, terms, being added or subtracted together. That would still be called a polynomial. These are the guys that have special names. Monomial means one term, binomial means two terms, trinomial means three terms. Notice we're talking about how many terms, not how many variables there are. Like this guy is called a trinomial even though it only involves two letters. It only involves x's and y's. It's called a trinomial because there's three chunkers or three terms being added together. So that's what polynomials look like. A lot of times you have more than three things. It's just called a polynomial. It doesn't have a special name. Okay, another thing you need to think about is what's called a degree. The degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of the variables. So let's just take my monomial here, 4xy. The degree would be the sum of the exponents of the variables. Little secret one there, little secret one there. So my degree would be the sum of those or two. That's the degree of that monomial. Or if I had 4x squared y to the third, the degree would be 5. You add together those exponents. One other thing is that sometimes there's no exponents at all, or no variables. Like let's just say I had the monomial 3. We know 3 is a monomial. What's the degree of that guy? Well, since there's no variable term, I'm just going to say the degree is equal to 0 degree equals 0. And if you wanted to, you could think of it as 3 times x to the 0 because anything to the 0 power is 1. That's how we know that the degree of just a constant is equal to 0. 
Okay, I'm going to back up over here, show you some more definitions. Next thing we're going to talk about is the degree of a polynomial. We just did degree of a monomial. This is degree of a polynomial. The degree of a polynomial is the degree of the term with the largest degree. That's tricky because degree shows up in that sentence like three times. Here's what I mean. If we have like 4x to the third plus x squared plus x to the eighth, the degree would be the degree of the term with the largest degree. So looking at my terms, the one with the largest degree is right here. So the degree of that polynomial is 8. Pretty much the simplified way of remembering the degree of the polynomial is to remember the degree of the polynomial is the highest exponent number. There it is. Standard form of a polynomial is the list of monomials in order from largest to smallest degree or exponent, largest to smallest exponent. So this trinomial right here is not in standard form because my largest degree term is this guy here. If I wanted to write it in standard form, that x to the eighth business needs to come first. My next largest degree is this guy because the exponent is three. And then my smallest degree for this trinomial is that x squared term. This is what's called standard form because my exponents go in order from highest to lowest. Last but not least is the term leading coefficient. I forgot to underline it. Leading coefficient is the coefficient of the term with the largest degree. Well, if something's in standard form, it's really easy to find that because your term with largest degree shows up first. So in this standard form polynomial, my leading coefficient would be 1. Sometimes it's a negative number. It's whatever shows up in front of this highest exponent term. So when you guys get into polynomials, you'll see the math isn't too tricky. The hardest part for many students is remembering all this vocabulary. So before you start doing your homework problems, spend some time just reviewing this stuff. Get this into your head, and I promise it will make your future homework assignments and problems go a lot more quickly.